Do you have a strong-willed child and need specific strategies? Today we're going to give you five specific strategies in dealing with your strong-willed child and it will help you in your parenting skills. All right, let's get into some of the specific strategies. Here's some specific strategies for the strong-willed child. Give your child choices that are both acceptable to you. For example, they need to put on their socks and they're resisting you. Well, you say, would you like to wear the red ones or you can wear the green ones? If those are both acceptable to you, give them a choice. And then when they get to make a choice, it feels like they have the power in the situation. Right. Or, you know, would you like to pick up your toys now or pick them up after the TV show? Right. They get a choice as opposed to pick up your toys now. Well, then that's the command. They don't have choice. They don't feel like they have a free will in this. And you often get resistance. Sometimes or oftentimes when you give them choices that are both acceptable to you, they will comply with that. Yes. Number two, be firm on the big rules, but be flexible on the small rules. For example, no playing by the street because it's dangerous. That's a big rule. It's inflexible. There's a danger there. But a small rule, they need to take a bath. Well, it could be, would you like to take a bath before homework or after homework? Your agenda is to get them to take a bath. Do they have to do it right now? Well, maybe that's a small rule that you can have flexibility, flexibility with, yeah. right? Right. And, you know, one of the things, too, about this type of child is that if you get them to agree prior to, you got it in the bank. Because there Give us were, an example. Sure. Like the, the small rule. Let's say that becomes a battle when they're bathing. Okay. Every day. So every day they get to pick before dinner, after dinner, before homework, after homework. That that becomes the communication flow. Because in their mind, they may have that they have to do this and this and this before they bathe. Which they're not saying to you, but in their own little mind. In their mind. Right. So in that... Instead of them fighting you, in that you start to say, okay, what are you going to choose today? And they have a choice. Once they feel that they have made the commitment to you, then there's no coming back. Like with, yeah. with Moses, our son, which I used to say, like if he's changing the rule, like he wants to stay up late, you know. And I would say, okay, however... I agree as long as there's no complaining in the morning about getting up and getting ready for school. Mm. And once he would agree to that, he'd say, okay, mom, I, I, okay, mom, I'm going to watch the show and then I'm going to go to bed. Then what would happen is in the morning when it was time for him to get up, there was no complaining because it was his word. He agreed. Yeah, that's good. You know, oftentimes when you ask questions like that, you give mm -hmm. them choices it stimulates the prefrontal cortex, which is the thinking part of the brain, and actually gets them out of the other part of the brain. Right. So that's a very important technique is to ask them questions, give them choices, and it allows them to think through it, but that's the part that you want them processing in the interaction. So let's look at specific strategy number three. When their behavior crosses a line that's unacceptable, Give them a clear consequence right. and then stay firm and compassionate in the enforcement. You want to intensively parent the younger when consequences are smaller to avoid the bigger. Yes. Like, for example, if they're in third or fourth grade and they're disrespectful to one of their friends and their friend, you know, pushes them down and rubs their face in the mud a little bit, well, they come home with a little bit of mud in their face, and you have right. to address the disrespect issue. If you don't address it then, they can be 20 years old and right. disrespectful to someone at a bar, and that person can shoot them. Right. And they're dead, That's right? right. So we want to parent and be intensively parent them when they're younger. Right. And for them to get those lessons then when the consequences are smaller right. than when they're older and they haven't had that. So, so make sure when they're crossing the line, you're firm and you're compassionate and you enforce it. Yeah, you have to enforce it. I always tell Moses, you're going to prison now in my house because it's a lot easier than going to prison in the big house. Because you have your own bed, you get to eat <laughs> your mama's food. <laughs> 
people here in this house love you and only want the best for you, you and know. And you get out of jail quicker than yeah, when you were yeah, in prison. Yeah, yeah, and he would laugh, but, you know, it was the price, you know, he had to pay to learn the lessons. Yeah. And then he always had to explain to me what's the lessons, but it's very true that the, and the consequence needs to match the crime. The crime. Yeah. And the desired behavior, which is a real, a whole nother show that we can do. Yeah. Okay, we'll do that. <laughs> so number four, the specific strategy is spend 10 to 15 minutes a day yeah. doing, viewing, or participating in your child's agenda or activity. Exactly. You want to get to know them. Yeah, so you, I'll sit down and just watch him play Xbox, talk to him some, ask him what's the strategies in the game. You know, there's, there's this. Or he's throwing baseball with his friend. Right. I go out and throw baseball with them for 10 to 15 minutes. Look. Do 10 to 15 minutes of activity on their agenda, and it's like putting, as we said before, you're putting deposits in the bank. Yeah. So when it's time to take out and yeah. withdraw, you have something in there. You have something in there. They respect you. Yes. Because you know them. Yes. You need to know them. You need to know what's their favorite color when we start in little. Well, who's their best friend? You know, what animal they like better than the other. You know, why they like dance, whatever it is. And as they grow, you grow with asking who they are and what's important to them. Yeah, yeah. You've done a good job at that, honey. Thank you. Yeah. And then number five, specific strategy. And this relates to the old brain, new brain kind of thing that we talked about. Buy time to cool off when you're frustrated or angry and delay in addressing the issue to later, if it can be delayed, so that you'll have much more of a thought through consequence and you'll be doing it from a, a lot different place. Yeah, definitely. And you know, if you ever get stumped, you can always ask them, what do you think you deserve? And I'll be back. And then that way that gives you time to cool off and that gives them time to start thinking about, oh my That's God. That's an interesting thing you've done over the years that we've done is to ask them what does he think the consequence right. should be. And it was always a lot harder than Ooh, what we would have ever harder. given. Way harder. <laughs> I remember we had taken the phone away from him one time. Yeah, well, he had just gotten the phone. He had it two weeks, and he was 12. Yeah, and there was some issues with the phone. So we had taken away the phone. Yep. And, you know, we were waiting, and we said, we said well, let's just wait till he asks for it back. Mm -hmm. before we give it back to him. And it was, what, like a year, a year and a oh, half? Oh, no, it was, yeah, 18 months. 18 months he didn't ask for it back. <laughs> now, we did have a rule set in place at the time that if I gave you a consequence and you bugged me on it, the consequence started all over again. So, like, if you had a timeout and you started saying, Mom, how long has it been? Then it started from the beginning again. So it would be 10 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever it was. So with the phone, we took it and we didn't put a time limit on it. He never asked for it <laughs> until 18 months. <laughs> so he, he did get it back. With yeah, the... no, he didn't even get that one back. At 18 months, we ended up getting him another one because that one was so <laughs> out of date. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> really, uh, have your child participate in, in the whole process of their consequence, and that actually seems to help a lot. Yeah. But, you know, the strong-willed child is a challenge. Yeah. And implement these strategies, the general ones, the specific ones. You will see a difference, mm -hmm. and things will improve. We also have a recommended resource for you. This is a book called Parenting with Love and Logic. We have a link for this book in the description below. It's by Foster Klein and Jim Fay. Excellent book on breaking down parenting strategies, very practical, a great concept. So get that book, and I think it'll be a deeper dive into what we've introduced you to, and you'll really find that beneficial. Finally, we also did a teaching on parenting ADHD, which is its own animal in itself. And we put in that teaching one technique that changed everything. It's a technique, a parenting technique I know you'll find helpful. So if you're interested in that, click on this video now and we will see you in the next video.